Hello again. We're going to start by graphing equations. We plotted points, and now we're going to answer this question, graph the equation. Besides just solving an equation for a variable, or figuring out that x equals 5 or x equals 8, we can actually represent it as a picture. And a picture is worth a thousand words. That's pretty much it. Yeah, that does make sense actually. If you want to find any solution that works for this answer, that's what a picture does. Uh, here's the example. Don't keep, uh, don't lose this off you know, mind. But negative two x plus y equals negative three. I want to figure out uh, an x value and a y value that will actually make this negative three. And the answer to that is that there's an infinite amount of answers, but it's a selective infinite amount of answers that work. I mean, you can't just plug in 0 and 0, or I should say, pardon, substitute in 0 and 0, because 0 plus 0 is not going to equal to negative 3. But there are values that will work in conjunction with x and y, when you uh, substitute them in together, that will actually make this equation true. I will show you how to do that. But in order to do that, I would suggest whenever you're doing linear equations, and a linear equation is any equation that has an x and a y, not to, not, uh, not to any power, just a regular x and a regular y. They can have numbers in front, but they can't have numbers on top. They can't have exponents. Or it has uh, y equals a number or x equals a number. All of these types of problems are linear equations. What I mean by linear equations is when you end up graphing them, they become lines. You know, that's why they're called linear equations. They look like lines. My suggestion to help you do this better, and we're going to focus on this a uh, little bit later. We're going to also do standard form, but I'm not really a fan of standard form, but I'll show you anyways because it's in your curriculum, is to solve for y. Whenever you have a chance to graph, whenever you have a chance to graph a linear equation, try getting y by itself. It actually makes it so much easier, for the most part, about 99.9% .9 of the time it makes it easier. Now, I want to get y by itself, and in order to get y by itself, I have to move everything that is not or does not have a y to the other side of the equation. See, this is fine, but this negative 2x that's with it, that's not fine. I need to move this negative 2x away from the left side, move it to the right side. And remember, what you do on one side of an equation, you have to do on the other. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides. What I do on one side, I do on the other. Negative 2x plus 2x cancels, it becomes 0, and I'm left with y equals, I prefer to put the term with the x first. You could make it negative 3 plus 2x, but it's more proper to put 2x and then negative 3. So I'm going to leave this as 2x minus 3. Congratulations, you just got y by itself. That's the first step to graphing an equation. What you need to do now, especially in these initial stages, is make a table. Like I said, there's an infinite amount of combinations that will work, but it's a selective infinite amount of combinations. You can't just pick a one and one and say it's going to work because, no, that won't work, good. One and one doesn't work, but you have to come up with values that you think will work, or not uh, values that you think will work, you have to substitute in x values and see what the y value is equal to. So whenever you're making a linear table, I would suggest that you create a table of five open slots for both the x and the y. Five is just a good number. One isn't enough because it doesn't have another point. Three, three is okay for linear, but five is efficient. And most teachers like five anyways. At least I do. So here are the values that I'm going to put in for x. You're going to input values in. And it's fine. You can you can decide to put whatever values you want in. Here they go. I'm going to put in, put in, pardon me, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And when it comes to graphing linear functions, this is a pretty safe set to use. Just negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Pretty much. Unless you're dealing with fractions, then it's a little bit more complicated, but not really. So what I want to do now is I want to substitute in these values, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, into this equation 
to see what my y is going to be. So let's start. And you can take out a calculator or you can write it down too, but I'll show you. You have 2 times, what's the first x you want to substitute in? Let's go in order, negative 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 3 or negative 4 plus negative 3 is negative 7. Go ahead, check it out, it works. Okay, give you time. Substitute in the value of negative 1 now. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus negative 3 or negative 2 minus 3, still the same thing, is negative 5. Now substitute in the value 0. 2 times 0 is 0 minus 3 is negative 3. Next value. 2 times 1 is 2, 2 minus 3, negative 1. And then, substitute in 2. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 subtracted 3 is 1. Now I do that in my head, but what I would suggest when you first do it, is try this out. 2 times negative 2, subtract 3, 2 times negative 1, subtract 3, 2 times 0, Track 3, 2 times 1, and whatever that answer is will be the y value. That's pretty much it. So let me go over that very quickly. What you want to do when you're trying to graph an equation is try to put it in y equals mx plus b form. Just solve for y. Just get y by itself. Once you get y by itself, come up with a table. I prefer five values. And for linear problems, for linear graphs, I prefer using the values negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. What you then do is substitute each of those values in at a time, and you're going to get a y value for that. The next step is to make a graph or have graph paper ready, which I already did. I created that little coordinate system, that Cartesian plane, where the horizontal axis, excuse me, axis is x and the vertical one is y. Now I'm going to plot those values and I'm always going to start at my starting spot, 0, 0, to see where each one goes. And the first point is negative 2, negative 7. Each one is an ordered pair. Here's the x, here's its y. 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 So I go ahead and do that. I'm going to go negative 2 on the x-axis, negative 7 on the y. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Next one is at negative 1, negative 5. You can go ahead and do this at home, too. Oof, awkward silence as I plot those points. So I plotted five of the points. There's actually more. You can, you can plug in, you can substitute in 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's still the same story. What's going on is that you're just going to create more points. And they're going to go in this direction if, you keep high, um, if your x values keep increasing, and if your x values keep decreasing, they're going to go in that direction. Now, if you connect the dots, it's going to create a line, hence a linear equation. But uh, there's one thing I want to talk about really quickly. If you're just plotting points, if you're plotting points, it's called a discrete function or a discrete equation, given that you know, each point is by itself and no one's bothering, it's, you know, it's just acting discreetly. It's called a discrete equation or a discrete function, depending if it is a function, and this is a function. If you plot the points, if you connect the dots together to create a line, then it's called a continuous equation or continuous function because the line is just one continuous graph. If it's something that connects and keeps going, it's continuous. 
if it's just points on a system, an XY graph, then it's discrete. This one tells me to graph it. And that's what you're going to be doing for the most part. You're not going to be plotting points. You're going to be coming up with points, and then from that point on, connecting the dots to form a graph. And what we're doing now is a line. And every graph that you're going to be doing for the next, well, many lessons to say the least, is going to be a line, a linear uh, function, a linear equation. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to connect these points. I'll do so as best as possible. Well, that was supposed to be a line, but as you can see, I wasn't using a straight edge. You should use a straight edge. I even say that in my classroom, too. Just use a straight edge when you do this. And they say, well, how come you don't? Because I don't have the liberty of using a straight edge right now. That's why. And I'm not being graded for this. So, well, I guess that's a hypothetical question. So you graph this, you plot the points together. Now, I put arrows at the end of each side because this equation keeps going, or this graph keeps going. This graph keeps going this way. So it keeps going in this direction as x gets bigger, and it keeps going in this direction as your x values become smaller or higher negative numbers. With that said, I say a picture is worth a thousand words because somebody could show you this and they say negative 2x plus y equals negative 3 or you fixed it up and you made it look a little bit prettier y equals 2x subtract 3 what exactly does that mean? well what it means is it means this it means that if you substitute in answers if you substitute in negative numbers it's going to look like this as you substitute in 0 it's going to cross here as you substitute in positive numbers it's going to continue going up now what's fascinating about this and it is fascinating. There is an infinite amount of answers, but only the answers on the line, or excuse me, only the numbers that exist on the line actually work. Since this was at 2, 1, it's going to be part of this answer. This will work. If I substitute in 2, 2 times 2 subtract 3 is 1. That works. If I substitute in 0, negative 3, it will work for this equation. If I substitute in a value here, that's not on the line, or anywhere on the line actually, it doesn't work. I'll give you an example. If I substitute 0, 0, it doesn't cross at 0, 0. I don't care how bad my graph is, I know it doesn't cross at 0, 0. If I substitute in 0, 0, which isn't even on the line, is it going to be an answer? Well, let's see. 2 times 0 is 0. 0 subtract 3 is negative 3. And my y was 0. 0 equals negative 3? No chance. Only the answers that you substitute that exist on the line are actual answers. And that's why graphing is so interesting. Instead of sitting there writing a table that goes forever and ever, and you could never list all the answers anyways, you just draw a graph and you basically say, well, what are the answers that work for this equation? Here, I drew a line. Those are the answers. Anything that is part of that line is an answer to the equation. So your line could keep going up to a million, whatever the x value is, and its y value will be 2,199,997. No, excuse me, 1,999,997, and that will work. So if you plug in 2 million, this will be 1,999,997, and it will exist on that graph all the way up there this way, which I'm not going to draw anyways. So with that said, it really is quite fascinating, and a picture is worth a thousand words. We're going to do one more like this, except we're going to use a fraction, and I'm going to change things up a little bit. I said use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. This is a little bit more advanced of a problem that I'm going to show you, and it's going to have a denominator, and I'm going to see if you can do that. With that said, have a great day.